let's do this shit. Welcome everybody to Legendary Tales. Am I loud enough? I don't know if I'm loud enough. Hold on. It according to the stream. I'm not loud at all. Very frustrating. It's fine. It's always like different every time. Okay. Um, welcome everybody to Legendary Tales. Hope everyone's having a great day. Um uh recap. Go. Shitting. Wait, everyone, wait. Hold on. They can't, they can't hear you. What the fuck? Uh, apparently my desktop audio is, it's not muted. Why can't they hear you? No. Uh, not at all. Um, it's the desktop audio. It's supposed to be there. Um, let me remove it. I'll, I'll remove it and I'll put it back on. Yes. Add. I know audio. Is audio input? Yeah. What? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. So that didn't work. Uh, output. Ow. You high train success with uh, hey. lizards. Oh, uh, yep. There you are. Okay, we can hear you I'm now. There, I'm there. Yep. Okay, you're there. Go ahead and start again. Sorry. Okay, so on the last session, uh, there was a new global broadcast by Prince Sharam, and it was Prince Sharam sitting on a bronze throne. Uh, it was constant broadcast for three days, and uh, it was live because uh, people kept walking into the shot and interacting with the prince, but the prince didn't move. Uh, Yvonne uh, showed up uh, seven or eight times, kept offering food and drink to Prince Sharam, kept whispering in his ear. Um, Lowerchik received uh, Yvonne's business card as a surprise on his uh, his little dresser, and there was a whole um, basically setting up of Guard duty with the spider, uh, uh, I'm going to say Absalorn, but I'm not sure if that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, the spider tribe to make sure that our rooms were being uh, watched overnight uh, so that we could identify how Yvonne uh, kept setting up uh, little surprises for people on their nightstands, like small candies and business cards with watermarks. Um, Evie, of course, is still deathly afraid of spiders, but received a, a brand new dress, robe. Well, it, was, it was a, I'm sorry, what? Cloak. 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 Um, received a brand new cloak uh, as a gift from Zoya. It was uh, very, very tastefully done. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, not Zoya. I can't remember who it was, the one that wears his ancestors. Uh, did Scry Yvonne eating uh, pig Kuzma. flesh with a bunch of. Kruzma. Scryed Yvonne eating pig flesh with a bunch of done undead people. Um, and the party got sent back to the Verdant Guard. Uh, we were basically sent on mission to go find another Eye of Moonball, but in more of an observe and report situation, simply because it's being moved on uh, a black market. Um, when we got to Verdant Guard, we uh, basically landed near a river near Fosvog. Uh, and that river itself is uh, tainted with temper somehow. Um, when we entered Fosvog, we noticed that there were... Uh, Loads of uh, uh, preachers. There was a uh, entire sort of little entourage of uh, a race of reptilians, uh, an anthropomorphic king cobra uh, with four arms, accompanied by medusas and large anthropomorphic crocodiles. Uh, all of them wearing uh, brass armor, and all worshippers of uh, mold, uh, moldy and grown, uh, god of disease. Uh, they hailed from the Wyagalbo uh, settlement far to the north, and uh, the, the large anthropomorphic King Cobra's name his name was Haka, the War Master. Um, he's looking for his son, Kana, 
and uh, we were basically given instructions, hey, if we find Kana, tell Kana to come around here at these times, and uh, that's going to get those two uh, reunited. We headed south on the road out of Fosvog to find a large tavern uh, that we were, we, we, we very successfully bribed a uh, mayor, I believe. It was the mayor to uh, tell us where not to go um, if we wanted to uh, avoid uh, some black market trade. And um, he basically sent us to the Dead Man's Hand, a large tavern just south of Fosbog, where we met Aksa, uh, the uh, Zoya's sister, the Absalorn giant spider people. Um, and she has lost uh, many children to the Artstad Inquisition. So some of us, less discreetly than others, uh, tried to let her know that we were our, our interests were aligned. And that's basically where we left off, was about to enter the dead man's hand. Perfect. Um, as soon as you guys get there, let me go ahead and switch us over to the right place. Uh, let me back out for a second. Oh, Evie is not quite in the frame. Okay. I did that because this, this map is not aesthetically the way I want it to on the outside of the building. So we're focusing on the inside of the building. Um, if everyone could do me a favor and make a perception check as soon as you're outside, that would be great. Okay, Evie, starting off strong. I have zero visibility right now. Is that right? You basically have the, the front door, and that's it. Do you not have any token vision at all? Zero. You have none. Did you zoom out? All right, give me a second and I'll fix it. I see what the stream sees for reference. Okay. Yeah, same. Um, let's see. Um, why doesn't Vidar have? He has vision. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I clawed out Vidar's eyes when he was sleeping last it's, night. It just popped in. We're good. Okay, good. Um. All right, so everyone made a perception check. On the inside, it's or you're basically right outside the door, and it's very quiet. Um, Aksha opens the door and begins to step inside. She's actually much bigger than this. Let me make her token the proper size. I don't know why. Here we go. I cannot move. You can't move? Mm -mm. Try moving. Why are we having issues with this? <laughs> you can see though, right? Yep. Oh. I I is that me or is that you? That's not me. <clears throat> okay. And my arrow keys aren't working. I'm just dragging. You could use Wazda, I think. That doesn't work either. Oh, hello. It's working now for some reason. She walks into the side of the bar and in front of you you see a gigantic wolf. A human, an orc, a half orc, and then there's two humans and a half orc. Um, everybody, make a, a history check for me, real quick. Holy shit! Technician in Vidar. <laughs> the guy. Everything the, is as it is. <laughs> yeah. The guy uh, sitting on the right side of the bar. This guy. You can see my little thing. He looks strangely familiar to you. Almost as if he might be related to Yvonne. Do I do I perceive that at a six or no? No, no, you don't. I was gonna have a word. Uh, Rep Rap is going to uh, just sort of walk over to Vidar and nudge him. Not in that direction. I, I kind of take the hint, and since I'm standing behind Low Airship, I kind of tap him on the shoulder and kind of. <laughs> Everyone's going to tell mm -hmm. everyone but, it, but Evie. E Evie's over there chasing down the spider because she likes spiders so much. Uh, do I do I rec do I notice your tap? Did, how, how did you tap? Did you tap my butt cheek or? <sighs> it was just kind of like you know shoulder blade tap. 
Yeah, but what? Hey, what? What do you want, Bedar? And, and, and when you when you turn around, I kind of do the whole like, look over there. And kind of, hopefully, you you notice that the guy looks familiar. Now that I've my attention's been directed to it with the sixteen, do I rec- do I recognize what he's trying to point out? Yeah. Okay. Hey, hey, Evie. Uh, I think I think you're. I think that's your boyfriend. He sort of stands up and smiles for a second and looks over to you. Well, uh, he, mm-hmm. he, he, he backs away from you uh, a little bit sheepishly. Um, I kind of just marched up to him very beeline and I'm just like analyzing his face and giving him like a little bit of a glare. He does look very similar to Yvonne. He's not as like his face isn't as wide, but he has very similar facial features and body type. Describe the body type. Uh, muscular, but not overly muscular. Fit, but not ripped. How big is the bulge? Uh, he's actually wearing a kilt. <clears throat> Even better. Um, I push Evie onto the floor. <laughs> Why? <laughs> So you can check it. <laughs> oh. Oh no, I've fallen. <laughs> um I'm gonna like very directly ask him who he is. And I kind of reach out and put my hand on Evie's shoulder as a like holding her back just a little bit. Hold my thing. earrings. <laughs> uh, uh and it, when you ask him, he sort of backs away and is like not really sure what to say and the man to the southeast of him walks up um and as he does his wolf stands to full height his wolf is six feet tall on all four legs and he stands over to you says oh excuse me this man is actually mute so anything you want to say to him i can translate what he would like to say to you unless you speak sign language Uh, fine. Who is this guy? And he sort of, he does like a bunch of motions with his hands. And he responds back, his name is Unsal. Where does he come from? He, he gestures. Comes back. Uh, he comes from the crag, apparently. Interesting. We're at in the crag. They gesture back and forth for what feels like way longer than it should. Um, uh, he actually comes from Urbolt. Do I recognize Urbolt? Uh, Urbolt is basically where you came out initially, the far to the north. Um, I should know this, but that's not where I'm from, right? No, no, it's not. Okay. You're from the south. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to kind of notice that I, like aggressively stampeded towards this guy. I still don't trust anything about the situation, but I'm gonna, like, ease off a make little a, bit. Uh, make a perception check, Evie. Even with a 12, you notice that the man's tongue has been cut out. Yeah, so I'm noticing also that I just, like, just a quick step away from his immediate face. Um... And ask, what do you? What is your business here? What are you doing? Uh, he sort of looks at you, and the 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 man the man that's talking for you gives him like a really fucking weird look. Like, and turns to you and says, "Apparently, he's buying body parts." Looking for tongues? He looks at you and pulls back his cloak 
and a very large dagger that appears to be soul stitched is holstered in his in in a holster on his side. Hey, your 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 dagger it looks like it's uh it looks like it's soul stitched. Uh, you don't you don't know Yvonne by chance, do you? When you said Yvonne, his face drops all emotion. Oh, well, cat got your tongue? He, he breathes in deeply, breathes out slowly, looks at the man to his left, and does some very, very precise speaking. He looks at you, he says, apparently you have ten seconds to explain your association with this Yvonne before he soul stitches you into something. Um, uh, he, he's just an asshole who betrayed us. Don't, no hard feelings. And sort of breathes in and turns back to the bar and starts drinking again. Apparently, he's done speaking with you. Is there a barkeep? There is not at the moment. <clears throat> That you could hear someone in the back making food or something, but you can't. At the moment, there's nothing. Uh, there's nothing else. I take a gold piece out and I put it next to his drink, and say, "Sorry for being rough on you, man." He just sort of nods at you. What sort of uh, relation do you have to Yvonne that would? elicit such a reaction no response I walk over to this uh, Skrillex looking lady <laughs> and uh, who might you be well, to, to you I don't know the Alfier's the uh, hair. Yeah, it just. You look interesting. I my, like interesting people. My name is Sumsar. Who are you? Are we still in disguise? Yes. What was my disguise name? <laughs> I never picked one. Right? So, so the interesting part about that is you haven't given one and you yelled across <laughs> the bar to somebody named Evie. Thanks for that. <laughs> Discretion. You're discreet. You're discreet like a fucking brick in the face. <laughs> I respond to her. I'm Evo. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Evo. What's your business here? I'm trying to buy tongues. Oh, like your mate over there. Oh, he is trying to buy tongues? But who knows? He said body parts. Could be anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a difficult time being mature. <laughs> As soon as you I, walk over to the dog, Evie, it starts sniffing you. I'm sniffing it back. It straight up licks you in the face. In a cute way? No. Oh. In a very, very tasty way. Um, I'm going to grab its muzzle and look in its eyeballs. They glow. They're literally glowing. And it's just, gonna... it's just sort of like trying to get your, your hands off of its face, like in a non-aggressive way. It's not trying to be aggressive. Yeah. I'm just asserting some dominance. You can try. Uh, make, it's shorter than me. Make a nature check real quick. Uh, 
I should be better than that yeah, at nature checks. Why is, why do I only get a plus one on nature checks? Because you're not proficient in it. You're a sorceress, not a druid. But, 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 Eladrin, there's no nature up for that? <laughs> there is not. It's that all feels about super other stuff. weird. It does feel weird. It's just cosmetic, I guess. Yeah. My association well, with nature, nature. Nature also affects, like, what type of beast this is, where it comes from, identifying, like, uh, specific aspects of the world around you and things like that. It's not just, like... There's loads gotcha. and loads and loads and loads of things that nature takes up that your specific aspect of is a very small piece of how, how much gotcha. the, the, the skill is used. Um, That's fair. And uh, the man comes over to you. He says, you may want to be careful. He is wild to a degree at the moment still. I've been working on domesticating this one for years. So d I'm just warning you. Don't be too aggressive. Understood. Yes, I know, I know. He's asking if you'd take your hands out of his mouth. That's all. Yeah, I, when he said that, I'd pull them off and just step back to a uh, non-threatening non distance. He sort of goes back to his chair and, tur and turns around and sits down to watch you guys. Um, Technician, what are you doing? Minding my own fucking business <laughs> on the other side of the room. Uh, no, yeah, quite literally. Um, just listening to all of that happen and pretending I don't know these people. To a degree. We came in together. I know, but it's more of a, it's more of a, I am like, quite literally, I'm minding my business. I'm waiting for somebody to walk in, somebody that looks extra suspicious. These all look like, so from... From what I could tell at first, these all look like the, exactly the kind of people I would find in a in a distillery that sells illicit moonshine. That's kind of Absolutely. what I understood from last time. Yeah. So yeah, um, just observing. I guess I I guess realistically, I would have tried to take a quick peek upstairs, see if there's anybody at the top of those stairs. But I'm gonna guess no. There, uh, there's you can't. There's uh, oh, and then also the you know see the dotted line in the middle of the room. That mm -hmm. denotes a large balcony that's above you guys. Uh, and there is, there's no one up okay. there. So I am presently under the balcony or You're did I under the balcony? Okay, got it. So this would be a kick-ass venue, actually. Um. Okay. Uh, what is everyone else doing? Are you just walking back there willy-nilly right now? I'm looking for a plate. I can't seem to find any. There's loads of plates, pig. and there uh, appears to be something cooking in the oven. Oh, I opened the oven. Uh, it appears to be some sort of uh, bird. I yell out to the common area. Hey, what kind of bird is this? I'm going to hear the rummaging and the yelling back and be like, Hey, you can't do this at every bar we go to. We're going to get kicked out of every single one. Will you wait till the guy comes back to get some food instead of just going in there? I, uh, I, I'm Evo, your barkeep. I, I go to the bar and just start, like, wiping down glasses. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> You role playing inside of the role play? This is too much for me right now. Um, I'm trying to find the token. There you are. We're token one twenty one. Um, just as you're like wiping down stuff. Um, a uh, five foot ten woman uh comes from the door. Uh, behind you from the basically from the kitchen um, and walks in front what are you doing oh I'm just cleaning some glasses for you and yes her, her eyes are glowing green if you could step away from the bar please of course, no problem. Let me know if you need any more, any more help. I stand right do here. not need any. Just keep going. 
and she's like shooing you uh, out of the bar. Hey, can 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 I get a can I get a drink? What do you want? The most tame alcohol you have. Tame. One alcohol, please. Tame. What do you mean tame? She walks, I don't want to she be walks, knocking my ass today. She walks over and pours out like this clear liquid and puts it in a shot glass and puts it in front of you. There'll be four silver. I um, give her a gold. And she, the pours, whole situation. She, pours, she pours you another two shots and puts all three of the shots in front of you. The whole situation is stressful. So I see the where she's getting a drink and I look at what he got and look at the bartender and say, give me the exact opposite of what he got. Water, right? <laughs> and she like she pulls out like this little miniature keg and puts it on the puts it on the um the bar. Just gra here's a cup, and she pour puts like a tankard in front of you. Just I meant the opposite. He asked for the most tame drink. I want oh. the most not tame drink. I thought you meant alcohol versus. Oh, I got you. No, no. Um. Uh, he pours out. She pours out um a shot glass, but it comes out like syrup. And she puts, it, she puts it in front of you. There'll be four gold. I'll toss it on the counter. Um, I give her another two gold and tell her to keep it. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and she heads back to get the meat out and things like that. Um, Vidar, what are you doing? Um, after trying to gently remind people that uh, Aksa had mentioned us to not uh, cause trouble, I just go and sit down and try to not cause trouble. He's supposed to be Yaksha. I don't remember. I don't remember. I think, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's very, very, very likely I misheard it and wrote it down wrong. I didn't write notes, it down in so. my notes. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that being said, um, are you guys going to go sit down? Are you sitting down at that table? Um, technician? Yes. Or I'm attempting to, it doesn't quite line up with grid. But, no, yeah. no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, this guy puts out incredible maps, but the grid is not always ideal. Um, yeah. I'm going to drink my shot and make direct eye contact with um Yvonne part two <laughs> he's not looking and at you. uh he's not going to look at you well i'm just gonna glare him down anyway because i'm right next to him and then put it slam it on the bar and walk over to where technician and bid are Did you make a constitution saving throw please and i do that by so uh, constitution constitution yeah i got it thank you you are fucked up already just Shit. straight out the gate why does this happen to me every single time <laughs> this is not the character i want to portray i want to be holding myself god you damn could, it this has happened three times now you could also use your cross and grits at bonus saving throw you could you could re-roll it is with it your cross fucking, and grits. that is not yeah. uh, i know i need i might need <laughs> you, I, you, you bought it? you bought super booze you bought super booze I feel like I need it later. This is I need to take the consequences of my actions. So, so noticing this basically immediately, uh, Rep Rap is going to produce a ration and uh, his canteen of water and and put both of them in front of Evie. I'm gonna double fist <laughs> the food and the drink, just like straight down. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'll let you make advantage on your next saving throw because you're actually trying to not kill yourself. Crying. <laughs> you cry. Your character's crying. Should I do it now? <laughs> yeah, do that. That is even worse than you did before. Okay. Oh, All right. oh my god! What the heck did you roll? How did you do that? That's like low airship levels of bad. Hey, hey, uh, uh, hey, low. Where's some of that uh, king king shit? Can I get some of that? <laughs> What, what are you referring to? I don't know. Just I miss... learn sometimes I do things bad and then sometimes I get I get uh, do it again. So can but can you you do something? <laughs> help me out. 
I think you might be drunk. I'm not. You are. Can you please help? <laughs> Can you kelp? <laughs> I'm not drunk. You are. Can you please help? No, it's can you please kelp. She <laughs> said kelp, help. not help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are, are you yelling voice. across the bar. Yes. yes, yes. We are three seconds away from EB just riding around in a wagon that doesn't Give have. Give me the voice like, in my head that makes me do better. Uh, I, I I walk over to the bar and yell to the back. Hey, do do you have any like? Bread? No. <laughs> I, 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 I'll a uh, Brit. Uh, oh, yep, 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 yep. And she immediately comes out with like a, a literal uh, baguette and a and a mug. Okay. Where? Where? Who needs it? Oh, I see uh, it. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, yeah. You, Rap you, just like got his hand up and is pointing. You asked for it, and she literally puts the baguette on the on the table and a whole a whole carafe of coffee, and she walks mm. back. Don't worry, gonna, like, don't worry about it. Okay. Again. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that that helps. Evis, um, what, what, what what is your name again? My name. <laughs> my name. You. My name's Evie. You know me. <laughs> ah yes, yes. Oh my Lord. gosh. Flip personality. That's right. Yeah. Let's pat her on the back. Can I try and fix this again, or are we done with that? Uh, I'll let you have one more. If not, you're going to be fucked up for the rest of this. Great. Add advantage because of the coffee advantage. and baguette. Yes. Okay. Thank fucking God. You will, you'll get there eventually, but for the time being, you're going to be fucked okay. up. That's fine. Thank you. Um. Uh, Vidar, are you sitting at that table on purpose, or are you just watching? What do you? What do you? What's your deal? Trying to distance myself from uh, the drunks a little bit. Okay. Just keeping an eye on everything. Um. Uh, Loerschik, will you make a Constitution saving throw for me, please? From his little weak little drink. He had three shots. <laughs> oh no. All right, pro tip. Don't go into one of Devin's bars ever. Oh my god. Nothing. I think I'm good. It does it does nothing. The the drinks, they do nothing. Um Two shots of water. <laughs> basic that's well he said light <laughs> alcohol, so it was very little alcohol. I don't, I think VTT is listening a little too hard. I know, right? Um Uh, just as you're doing this, um, I need to pull up my Google spreadsheet of things of this specifically. Um, uh, as you're doing this, uh, three drow come in from outside. So, uh, presumably, Laura Chick had, uh, uh, his empty glass in front of him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so technician is going to reach reach across the table for the empty glass and flip it over to get his attention, and mm -hmm. then just motion motion towards the drow that just came in the door because the weird chick has his back to the door and is probably still not actually paying attention. Are you there? He is I'm there. there. He's You're there. there. Okay. Do I see any reflections <laughs> off of? Um, do I see any reflections off of technician's body? Uh, no, so he looks around. like. Uh, doesn't he look? Wait, what do you look like as? Aegis, Aegis. So it's a different. Yep, 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 so, yep, yep. but the the trick is, it's a disguise, right? So, the disguise itself probably doesn't reflect correctly in the first place. Yep. Yeah. Actually, I have no idea how it that looks. Would work. It looks like a different material. Essentially, it's not. Yeah. His previous shiny material, where, um, Vidar looks like. Do I Arnold see any metal plates or anything that would be reflective in some capacity on the table? Uh no, because they're they're not they're probably made of steel and not shiny particular. This isn't exactly the most high end bar ever. Um, there's uh, and there's not even windows that are facing that either. With the way that you're the direction you're facing. I look over to Evie and put my hand on her back just to like pretend like I'm checking on her, and I use my right eye to try to catch some peripheral of what's going on. Uh yeah, so there's um. 
all three of these drow walk in. One of them has like a really big silver um, uh, tiara on, but it almost looks like it's defensive in nature and it hooked up to like a giant, uh, like a helm of some sort. Um, and if anyone wants to make a religion check to see, uh, two of them are priestesses and one of them appears to be some sort of slaver or like job. Loreshik knows nothing. That's what you get for pretending to check in on me. Uh, I'm going to assume my head is like kind of just on the table at this, at this moment. So I am not going to make a history check. Okay. That's fine. Um, you're not really sure what religion they follow. But all of them are um, wearing some sort of heavy armor as well, as, except for the slave master is wearing like a really tight uh, studded leather outfit. Um, and all of them are wearing high heels. But I stand like, up and I turn around and I'll go but sit like at the metal high the, heels. The like ridiculous, not combat ready or so they seem. Um, I'm going to look up for a half second and be like, I love your boots, and then head back on the table. And the the one on the left, um, she has a very high collar and like an actual like metal sort of like, uh, what's is it called a gorget? I think it's what it's called. It's like a, the high metal collar. Um, looks at you and just nods in your direction. Um, all their hair is very wispy, and it's almost acting as if they're underwater. It seems it's very strange. That their whole appearance is very not normal, almost all magical in nature. It's it's very strange. Um, and then the one priestess on the right hand side has these like white tattoos all over her body, and all of their armor is quite revealing. Like it's it's contra con contrary to the nature of armor. Essentially, they sort of look like a, a dark elf from lineage or something. Um, it's very strange. But they're walking in, and they all have, like, the normal adventurer's kits and everything. Um, and they look around for a moment, and they go into the side room over here past the past the dog. They go over here, and then they make their way down this way. What are you guys doing? Um, kind of want to investigate their appearance there real quick because Rep Rep thinks it might be a disguise. Okay. Was Defender currently looking like? Uh, Defender currently looks like the shield. The shield? So, yeah, okay. So, Rep Rap is currently disguised as a different type of um, uh, Warforged, and that Warforged is known as Aegis. Aegis is basically sort of like a wider wider base, but very stout upper, and all Aegises usually just carry, like, normal shields. Um, that way it's easy to equip oh, them. Oh, so Defender is essentially so disguised Defender as a is shield. Is, yeah, exactly. So, basically, Defender is being carried around by Rep Rap right now. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and remove his token for the time being. Okay. Just because. And then when you're like, we're going into combat, we'll put him back out. It's not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. it, it takes Fair no enough. effort for me to do that. So. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Your investigation as they're like walking away. Uh, yeah, some of their armor appears to be tempered, but for an illusion, it, it would put off a different thing. It would, it would look different if, in, if it was an illusion. Uh, it, you can assume that it's some sort of magical passive effect that they have on from their armor or something else. Almost like a displacement field or some sort of cloak effect that they have on. Uh, it does not appear to be an illusion, though. It's very it. much real. Uh, how did the dog react when they walked by? Uh, the uh, dog he... is disguised as a shield. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry, no. that dog. Wrong, yeah. wrong dog. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Uh, the giant wolf made no response whatsoever. He actually is just laying down, and he didn't even look at them. As if he knew them, or just indifference? Indifference. 
and also their 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 uh temperament is not aggressive it looks very passive where you walked up very aggressively to that guy and you're being quite For aggressive sure. they are not exuding any aggressive feelings at all well Richard was wandering around the entire uh tavern earlier right mm -hmm. did, he, did he go into that mm -hmm. other room he did yes I'm gonna lean over to him at the table and be like did you see anybody else in that room when you were in there or did they just go into that room by themselves? Nice and empty. Looks like there's a fireplace on the wall in there. There is. So unless unless Santa came down the chimney, uh, they're alone in there. Well, I uh, so I open up my though. pouch, assuming Callum was mm -hmm. sleeping or something, mm -hmm. and uh. Right. I, What's going I on? lean over to Vidar and I say, hey, hey, Vidar, um, wouldn't it be great if, like, we knew someone who could, like, just go in there and, like, see what's going on? I, like, gesture as as good as I can to, to Callum, like, towards the other room. Callum sort of hops along in there. And not knowing about Callum, I kind of just say, well, we either need to make sure no one else goes in or we need to somehow be aware of if there is a rear exit from that room. Uh, uh, Loershik, you hear from that room. There's no exits at all. Not, not at all. Unless they go through the chimney, which is very small, by the way. I don't even have issues going in there. Uh, yeah, when I was in there earlier, I I really didn't see any other exits. Um, oh, wait, there's one behind the there, stage. There's a stage, and there's one back there. You just gotta be careful. There was a stage, though. There was a stage. The, you know what? Uh, there might be a rear door to the stage. That would be it, though. And you'd see him cross. You'd see him cross either way. They'd have to cross between the, the entrance you're looking at right now. That you'd see them go into the st onto the stage. That's all I'm saying. Like uh, what I'm going to show just, you, like, like you can see where my 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 cursor is. There's yeah. a door here, so they'd actually have to walk from down here up here because they walked down to these tables. They'd have to walk up here. But the stage stage was like on the other side of the room from where they went. So yes, yes, yes. We'd yes. have we'd we'd see. No, I'm I'm, I'm talking to Vidar at this okay, point. Okay, okay. So. I I, it, we could, if we just watch the door, we'll see if they head towards the stage or if anyone crosses to come talk to them. I clear my throat to try to get get a you know, Callum's attention to have him come back. <clears throat> oh, right, right. And he like clip, clap, clip, clap, all the way back up onto your shoulder. Um, I've already forgotten. Did we go without Casimir? Oh no, Casimir is outside. He's staying guard outside. He is. And did we ever get described of who it was that we were looking for? Other than just, we know we that did. there is a trade going down. Uh, so we were definitely looking for Drow. That was, that was who we knew was on the sell side of this. Um, we are supposed to figure out who is on the buy side. And we're also supposed to not engage. But Hey, uh, Vidar, wh where did Spider Lady go? She's actually hanging from the ceiling above you. I, I Glad like, I my up. do I see her? That. Is she hanging on the ceiling in like above the balcony or like underneath the balcony? Oh, she's above the balcony. She's just in the middle of the ceiling, yeah. hanging from a string, a thread. I'll just she's current. She's currently knitting something. Hey, hey, what what you knitting up there? I like knit stuff. Um, as you ask that. Um, 
a body falls onto the table. <laughs> I wasn't the one that I'm sitting at. I wasn't knitting. No, the one that Vidar and Loershik okay. are sitting at. I wasn't knitting. And she pulls it. She starts to pull it back up. Is the body like decomposed? Is it no, alive? it's it's in silk. It's wrapped in silk. So I can't tell. No. Okay. I don't see it like moving or anything. Like someone's trying to breathe inside. No. Okay. Oh, that that's fun. It's quite delicious, actually. And you see her bring it back up and like she curls back up into like a little ball and you hear this the slight sounds of I'm gonna re look over my shoulder to Laura she can be like, Could you not eat so loudly, please? <laughs> she does the, the drunk Shh Shut up. That's not me, Eves. Uh-huh. Okay. okay uh, sorry, Just I'll keep it. Keep I'll it keep down. It down. Thanks. So I, uh, I do the cool like grade school kid thing. I spin around in my seat. So like I'm facing at Evie and, and everyone. I say, so uh is that the is that the you know the, you know who that we're looking for? Um Rep Rap is just going to nod. Oh, it's token. Do we, do we smash our heads in now, or only half of who we're looking for? And we were also told to not engage. Um, as you guys are having oh. this conversation, um, Casimir walks in. I think our buyer is here. Where? Wait for it. I wait. Um, I assume Casimir would have seen the uh, draw walk in earlier. Yeah. An old man, an older gentleman with a fully tattooed sphinx cat walks in. The tattooed cat is on his shoulder. And he sniffs. <laughs> And he turns to the right and he makes a beeline straight to the room. I think that's our cue, Casimir. Um, did the dog I'll go respond to a uh, cat walking by? It did this. Oh. It got the fuck away from that guy immediately. And you could see in its fur, like all of its fur stood on end the second the dude walked in the door. Something scared the big doggy. I walk over to the big dog and I just like calmly approach and say, you okay? I walk over to the, the guy and ask if his, is your... I heard no. you mention earlier that it's not fully no. domesticated. Is it okay? He's not. He's it's very clearly riled up by that man that I'm going to get away from. I apologize, but I'm going over here. Um, if you'd like to go upstairs, you can. And the dog immediately runs up the stairs. I walk over to the guy. Why? Why? Why was he scared of that man? I don't know, but if you were to walk inside a place and you have a cat that's tattooed, do you know a cat that would sit and get tattooed willingly? Do you know? No, cats don't do that. I am willing to bet it's not a cat. Did you think, did you, were the, were the tattoos tempered? Oh, I didn't see. That is an even more terrifying prospect than I thought. 
I uh, I tap my shoulder again. I think I'm going away now. Um, have a wonderful day. And he puts he puts two gold coins on the table and walks out of the bar. Without his dog. Uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> Is anyone else doing hey. anything? I call over to Evie. Hey, Evie, do do you want to dance? Dance? Yes. I know a perfect place to dance. Come with me. Okay. <laughs> is there a way to get onto the stage? There is. Mm. You, can crawl, you can crawl up onto the stage. My moment. Crawl up onto the stage. I like lift one leg onto the the stage and like roll onto it. Is the, in order to get up? Is even though is I could easily lit? probably just. Oh yeah, the room. Every every room in here is lit. Casimir so I should be able to see the tokens sand. on the other side of the room. Yeah, can you not? No, I only see like my actual vision. Oh, so I see okay. up to the Let me add uh bottom. let me add uh let me add some lighting just in case. I'm dancing. You can rotate your token. I found that out when I had to use my laptop. I'm dancing. <laughs> can you see now? Yes, thank you. Okay. I just want to make sure everyone can actually see what's going on. So you guys are just dancing? Mm -hmm. Um, the, the, the older man is just standing there with his cat. Um, and everyone make a perception check. Uh, Vidar, I mean, um, technician, what are you doing? Um, taking up the Aegis post right there, kind of at the doorway and hey. intently listening. Maybe I'm not drunk anymore. Oh yeah. You've definitely, you're either faking it or it's worn off by now. Um, awesome. Or you feel better. Yeah, I'm starting to feel better, dancing it off, perceiving stuff. As you're sitting there, like, watching this happen, um, the woman with the white tattoos pulls out a black sphere with a temper on it and throws it to the man, and the cat catches it. With what? With two paws. I like the cat. Do you remember how much the Eye of Bumball weighed when you had it, Technician? Uh, yes, I believe it was two and a half pounds. Probably should have been more, but I think that was for... No, it's, it's that... it was... Was it more? No, that's right. It's two and a okay. half pounds. Have you ever seen a cat catch a two and a half pound object when a cat normally weighs between eight and nine pounds? I, I I have, but I should preface that um, I know a lot of Maine Coon cats. True. This say is, my cat's this is, 20 pounds. <laughs> this Not is, to be argumentative. I'm just saying, yes, I have seen that. This but. is an eight, <laughs> this is an eight pound Sphinx cat. Okay. Um, no, not, not a, not a tiny cat. And it sort of puts it down on his shoulder and puts a paw on it and then curls its other paw around it and just lays its head down. Um, Evie, you see him put it's very you've never seen someone so fast with like sleight of hand before he hands the priestess the one with the with the with the tattoos hands her a massive bag that the bag itself is soul stitched like it's a big bag but they managed to like do it really fast that um, they managed to do it very quickly. So the bag is what they gave or they got back from the guy yep. after they tossed him the ball. Uh-huh. Um, I'm going to like still like doing a little bit of a jig to not cause any like attention to the fact that we might have stopped and are staring at what they're doing. Um, just like I'm assuming the can are like dancing ish. So I'll just say, I think I just saw that tattooed lady get a soul stitch bag of some kind in exchange for that ball. Sounds like the deal's been made. I hop down and walk over to Casimir and tell him what Evie just mentioned to me. Are you dancing on a table now? 
No, I was trying to, I was trying to like, I know that you said it earlier. I was just seeing if I could line it up more to be at the table, not on the table. If you hold shift and drag your character, it takes you off grid. Oh. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> trying to make it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, yeah, the I'm other, not dancing the other on the table, table. The other table lines up perfectly. That one, not so much. Um, as you guys are sort of watching this, the man and his cat. Oh, by the way, the man has a large cane. It appears to be made of uh, some sort of golden or like brass metal, brass or bronze. You're not really sure. Um, at the very bottom of it, it has like a four clawed talon at the bottom. It sort of digs into the wood every time he uses it. And he begins to walk away. Are you going to stand in his way or are or no? Um, so we're, we're going to, we're going to do the accidentally shift into his way sort of thing. You know, when two people are trying to pass each other in the doorway and it's like, you both go left and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw if you're coming in contact with him. Okie doke. This can't possibly go bad. It went bad. You this could be worse than being drunk. You touch him, but what you realize is that you touched the tail of the cat, and you are so scared that you fall to your knees. Because I'm about to message you what you saw when you touched the cat. As this and is going on, I run over to his side. In a, an attempt to block the doorway and reach down and say, Technician, are you okay? You mean? No response. Uh, well, well, uh, uh, Joe Bob, are you okay? Uh, technician is going to look up at, at the, at the old man and say, uh, uh, pardon me. I did not mean to be in your way. As they walk out, can I do any kind of extra check on the cat to get any other information about it? Or is there nothing? Um, If you want to look, if you want to make an investigation check, you're more than welcome to do that. Or a chrono check. You can do either one. Let's do investigation. Wait. How do I see... Sorry, uh, Meta. How do I... Like, my thing says plus four to make 14 for Arcana, and mm -hmm. um, plus passive, one to make that's, 11. That's essentially passive Arcana. There, there, there are skills that you can use passively. For example, passive perception is for you 17. So if I roll anything less than a 17, technically your character should see it automatically. Some skills mm -hmm. can be used passively, some skills cannot. Um, there, are, there is ver there, there. I would say that there are justifications for using Arcana passively, but in this specific aspect, I would say no. Um, okay. because you're looking for something specific that you wouldn't notice by default. You get what I mean? Okay. Like, yeah. knowing the nature of the cat is not necessarily default. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that I throw in an arcana as a... Sure. No sure. Noticing that, that he fell to the ground, which I thought seems kind of weird. And it wasn't just falling to the ground. You guys noticed that he trembled like he was very human for just a second right um there that cat is tempered not only is he tattooed he's tattooed with temper um oh no don't tell i erased it damn it is it cool if i just explain what you saw yeah go for it okay so upon touching the cat you see a basically you're from the perspective of someone on the ground and you're looking up at this monstrous 20 to 25 foot tall creature that is just muscle little bit of muscle with skin wrapped around it. it it's not that the skin is sitting on it it's almost like stitched onto it and it is flaying these giant beings alive with spiked chains like it has two spiked chains in in either hand and it's just like just 
slapping him with it and it's ripping and tearing flesh and he's just looking at it and the flesh of the enemies he's hitting are is actively regenerating but he's doing this constantly and this and then he looks down at you and the fear that you feel in your eyes or that you feel that you the fear that you feel in your soul from this creature is so so weighing on you as a being that you cannot help but drop to your knees and that's the vision that you saw the second that you touched the cat and the cat looked at you the second that you did that and you saw the exact same eyes as that colossal chain demon creature um religion check to see if i know anything about that sure. giant colossal okay sure There are rumors of, in this universe, and any universe that's linked to the Magic the Gathering universe, there are, there are rumors of these creatures called Planeswalkers that can travel between planes willy-nilly. And you've heard distant rumors. Everyone has always heard the, the tales of Planeswalkers existing. There's a few notable ones, um, from the specifically from the Magic the Gathering universe. But this one specifically is a pair of Planeswalkers known as Terry and Gusha. And thinking about it for a second as, as the fear sort of wears off on you and you, 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 you would have been forced to get out of the way is what I'm saying. And he sort of steps yeah, over, uh, steps over, so steps <laughs> over you and passes, pa passes by you. And you realize that this is Terry and Gusha. And from the rumors that you've heard, they are masters of blood magic. While he walks by, is his cannon on his left or his right hand? I assume it's right. Say again. Is is the cat uh, is on his right shoulder? His... Oh, this cane is on his le is on his right hand, the same the same side that the cat is laying on. Okay. Uh, while I'm like tending to uh, phalanx, uh, I I accidentally drop my maul in hopes that it hits their cane. Okay. So make a performance check for me real quick to see if you pull it off the way you want to pull it off. Standing in the way of someone does not require a skill check. <laughs> um, yeah, you drop them all and the cane knocks it out of the way with any effort, without any effort. That's a nice pussy you have there. The cat looks at you. I need to make. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. You're gonna die. So at this point, I use <laughs> Will the Old King. You, you begin to glow. You her. begin to glow, uh, or cross and grits. You could do that as well. I I use my. Cro how do I use that one? Uh, it's it's this, just re-roll it. I haven't made an ability yet, so. Okay. Um. Not as bad. So at this point, I use Will of the Old King. <laughs> he begins, He's a lizard man. He's a lizard man with halfling luck. I yep. love it. He, Which, be <laughs> he begins to glow red, like he soul stitched. Um, Thank God. As you as you use Will of the Old King, the man looks down at you. What have you got there? I grab my mall and I say, "Ah, oh, it's it's just the mall." Who is that on your shoulder? Do, am I the only one understanding him, or? Uh, yeah, this is in your mind. He's saying oh. no words, but he's just looking at you. So I'm just talking to myself at this point. Yeah. I ignore him. He sort of bends over and taps Callum on the head on his skull. That's interesting. I gesture to my uh, bag and I open it. He drops down. Unfortunate for you. And he turns and he walks away. He's dope. He 
like Terry and Gusha? Yeah. Is the cat, do you say the cat's called Gusha? The cat is called Gusha. I love that entire thing. That was amazing. I want a soul right. stitched cat. <laughs> so many prerequisites there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Rep Rep is going to stand up, dust off, and uh, I walk into this room, go find Casimir. <laughs> I know who our buyer is. Yes, who's that? Have you heard the rumors of planeswalkers, specifically Terra, Terry and Gusha? I have not. I am sure that the rest can explain at the camp. We should leave. I am not comfortable here. I imagine casimir has been like pounding drinks this whole time, but they're not doing anything. Oh, no, he's... no. He hasn't needed to even make Cosmere's to save throw. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, eat, like drinking is not doing anything to him. Oh, of course He's not. just like, I'm good. Everything's fine. Um, okay, so right before that, uh, so right, right, at, sorry, right after Casimir says we should leave, um, Rep Rap is going to go up to the bar and, uh, and just yell, Barkeep. I have a name, you know. I am sorry, I did not catch your name before. Oh, it's Krellef. Krellef? Am Cr I saying that correctly? Krellef. Krellef. Thank you, Krillif. I would like a cask of whatever you sold the elven girl. A cask? A cask. It only comes in this, and she pulls out a little tiny little baby pony keg. Like, cask <laughs> full of it. That will do. I'm gonna roll my eyes at Rep Rap when I walk by. That'll be, that'll be 120 gold. Would you take 100? Well, you got you got anything else? You got anything else to trade? I do not. Don't even come up I here. I put the additional it. twenty gold. Oh, right. Okay. Thank you. And then just to write back to Casimir, my business is concluded. Quick money question. Yeah. Um. So we were getting paid by Yvonne for like a good while, mm -hmm. but I didn't keep track of how many days that was. Uh, Spooky, if you have that much money, I'm assuming you did keep track of how many days that was. We only got paid once and it was for a total of uh, two. It was either 250 three, or 300. It was, it was 300. Yeah, it was 300. Okay. I wasn't sure if I started okay. with some and I already spent it or not. Like, to, to be clear, I had the 120. I just wanted to haggle. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed. <laughs> I was just trying to not cause additional problems after well, that last hey, interaction. I haven't I haven't pissed anybody off yet. I figured I might as well just haggle a little. Yeah. Um Yeah. So you guys are able to know who the buyer was. Um mm -hmm. you don't know who the seller was. Are you doing anything else while you're here? Uh where's the I, uh... Go ahead. Where's, um, sorry, I've forgotten her name. The spider lady's sister. Oh, Yaska? She's Yaska. above you. Like, directly above me mm -hmm. at this point? Um, do I notice? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna realize that I've walked directly under her, and, uh, I'm assuming she's coming out with us as well. No. Okay. So I, I just freeze a little bit underneath of her, and then sidestep and then like hang out by the doorway waiting for everyone else make a perception check ev real quick okay 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 last time this happened it like everything blew up so <laughs> okay i i look up to yaska and say hey so we we never found out uh, is there something going on between you and your sister? She drops the body on the ground again. <laughs> and I'm gonna s jump through the doorway. <laughs> Are you really? Yep. 
You just, you just leave it go. I'm out. <laughs> just, just like through the doorway, like just other side of the door. I'm right there. And she sort of crawls over to you. My sister and I uh, parted ways when I chose not to be part of the war bands. Tell her I said hi when you see her. I hand her a card and say, we'll do. And I walk towards the group. Thank you. Um. <clears throat> all right. So as you guys leave here, we're going to start a 15-minute break. And we will see you guys in 15 minutes. We're going to take a short rest. We'll see you in 15 minutes. Uh-oh. Are we here? Uh-oh. Did I lose it? I oh, see. no. Okay. It lagged us for a second. All right. See you guys in 15 oh, okay. minutes. Yeah.
Vampiric. Is it Vampiric Tutor or, or the demon? Yeah. It's Demonic Tutor. From yeah, it's Vampiric. It's no, Vampiric. Vampiric tutor. is from the other one. Welcome back, everybody. To Legendary Tales. Just talking about magic cards. You know, just doing what we do. <laughs> um, by the way, the, I do have an announcement. After this, I'm going to be going down to Spooky's house. We're going to be streaming opening magic cards on his channel. So, very excited for that. I thought I'd announce it now rather than like later well i'm gonna announce later too anyway but still um where were we you guys are leaving the dead man's hand um and as soon as you leave i need everyone to make a perception check please <clears throat> you leave and you are not where you were supposed to be. So, sorry, you mean when we step out of the dead man's hand, we are no longer where that was the first time? Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't feel so good about that perception check from earlier now. Give me a second. I forgot to do walls. You are currently standing in front of a Japanese style bathhouse. Uh, this isn't where we parked. Like the dead man's uh, hand looks like the bathhouse, or there's a bathhouse across the road. Uh, like across for directly across from you is a bathhouse. Directly behind you is a forest. So the dead man hey, hand Kazmer? is gone now. Yep. Yes. What? Where are we? I don't know. Pull is a cucumber. I, Can I, you, like, yeet back? Uh, uh, don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I don't want to waste our one chance of getting back. Do you want Can me to waste the one chance of us getting back? No, no, no. Can, do we have a way to communicate back to the Cross and Grits? Uh, and... Yes, we have your way of doing it. Oh, yeah. Do we do that now? What time is it? Uh, it appears to be around uh, midnight locally. What do you guys think? Should I phone home? We only have a limited amount of information we can convey. Yeah, sure, but maybe we can like get we some back. Of information. I say call him. What message should we convey? It's a, it's a one way like email send, right? Mm -hmm. Like we don't we don't get what that response email? immediately. Hello? I'm well, just saying that we don't, like... we don't we don't get a response immediately. Yeah, yeah. I right. feel like we should communicate that Warmaster Hakka's in town and that uh, we made it to the dead man's hand and found the dryads that were delivering the Eye of Mumbal and identified who was collecting. And Are now we're in an unknown all location. Hey, uh, Rep Rep is going to start scribbling. Okay. He's just taking notes. Um, yeah, but he's trying to format this into a message that works. Casimir, do you know if this communication stone, the sending stone, do you think it's limited or can I just endlessly talk until I hang up? It's around 25 words from what I remember. Uh, is there anyone outside around us? There is not. Are there any symbols on the bathhouse that, like, might be identifiable? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Um, sure. Go ahead and make a history check, please. All right. Having finished his scribbling, uh, uh, Rep Rep hands a piece of paper to, um, well, basically to everybody else to look at. Nix the hello. <laughs> what the heck? I think my scale is wrong. Give me a second. <clears throat> I think my map is messed up, but um, it it is not. It is and it isn't messed up. What? I feel like we could omit the part about War Master Haka. We can tell them that in person if we make it out. Perhaps we should include something about us being lost. Agree. Okay. I, I think War Master Haka is important. I don't think why he's in town is important. Maybe War Master Haka here and get rid of the hello. And then get rid of looking for Sankana. <laughs> that saves us a lot of words, right? Right? Then say, lost in Japan land. <laughs> I add a baby, it's a boy. <laughs> um, uh, directly on the top of the, the bathhouse, there's a large red, uh, basically double crescent moon like this. And you're not sure what it is. Do any of you guys recognize that, like, double moon thingy on that bathhouse? Uh, history? Religion? Sure. History. History. Oh, yeah. I recognize it a bit. Um, technician, you know that it's, it's you, you know that it's, um, it's a faction called the Crimson Sunset. This appears to be a bathhouse belonging to the Crimson Sunset. But most of the terrain features that you've heard of do not match this in any part of the world you've been to. So, However, this <sighs> building doesn't appear to belong here. You're not really sure. So I'm not sure. Technician, I think this message is great. It looks like we have two words left. Should we maybe say... Send help. Hello, twice. <laughs> Hello, twice seems very nice. But I think I think that we should do send help. Or help, please. Or I, I would say that if you would like to add those, you should. Be? I am not the one sending the message. <laughs> Does everyone agree? Anyone think we should change it? Unless we immediately have a, an idea for how to get back, send help would be... A good idea. Alternatively, we could uh, My scale take a bath. Yeah, I don't think that's... Casimir, uh, did did they mention that the Sending Stone resets every morning? They, yeah, it does reset every morning. Every dawn. I feel like if we send the message now next dawn we'll have the ability to send another message if we if we need to i think we should add send help and i think we should do it now i think we should take a bath i concur i ignore the fake drunk evie i'm not drunk that was a legitimate suggestion vidar are you okay with this i'm okay with sending the message with the, the request for help Perhaps we can uh, okay. w wait in the bathhouse while help arrives. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna send them a message. I pull out the sending stone. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of look at it blankly, trying to figure out how to use it. You just just, a you rock. just focus on it. Just focus on it. It will activate. It's a word. Did you not? You set up a word. I don't see a word. You set up one. Do you did not set one up? 
Have you have you no. attuned to it? Meta, I legit took notes and I don't have <laughs> anything about a, a, a Well, you should have you should have attuned to it and then set a word that you could say to activate the stone. If you would like to set it up now, you can do that. There's a there's a, a trigger word that you can say to make it work. Okay. Casmer, I don't think I I don't think I attuned when before we left. Well, Which then I... you should attune to it now. Just sit down and fucking do it. I sit down. How long does it take to attune? An hour. Okay. <laughs> I, I hold it in my hand. Do I just have to say the word to it over and over for an hour? No, you have to just concentrate on it for an hour, and that's how you tune to it. And then after okay. that, um, you set up your, basically during the attunement, you set up your uh, uh, word, and it will go. All right. So an hour passes, I assume, at this point. Are you Is just sitting outside of the bathhouse for an hour? Yes. Is anyone else doing anything while this is happening? Uh, Rep Rep would like to head into the bathhouse. Same. I am going to stay outside. <clears throat> Considering we just got teleported to a random bathhouse, I'm not going to go rushing in. <laughs> plus, it's a trap. cannot find Oops. the token I want. So, stay in this first Wait, room. Wait, need more tokens, I guess. I I know, shut up! It's fine. Are we supposed to see anything other than just, like, blue... Oh, never mind. As... Technician goes in, and I'm trying to concentrate. I said, Technician, no massages for you. I'm just going to walk uh, down. The lady at the front desk bows to you deeply. Sorry, uh, zero vision. Why? Why is everyone's vision I, I, gone? I, I don't know. Why? Is I can it... see. Okay. I don't know why you guys have... Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, Vidar has zero vision. Apparently, the tokens don't... Like, you're... you're... Whoa. Hold up. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Vidar can see... Everyone can see now. Is everyone good? Yes. Uh, she looks at all of you. She points uh, at the paper in front of her. And on the paper in front of her, it says, uh, Bath is one gold. Okay, I'll put a gold on the table. Okay. Um, I will. I will put uh, two gold on the table. I'll say, "Come on, Casimir, my treat." I'm gonna look Thank at Rep Rep and be like, "Is that okay for you?" Yeah. Okay. Yes. Just don't want you to rust or anything. We it's kind of a joke. Let's have to stand in the rain. It's just a joke. Um, and then as you Fair put enough. the gold on the table, um, she points right. She points at Evie and then points right. Points at uh, Technician and Casimir and points to the left. Her left. Okay. Uh, Vidar, what are you doing? I'm just kind of keeping a watch over Lower Shik. Uh, I do not have. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I I can't move Casimir. I I'll move him. I got. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll move him. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, you get into this like little area here, and this is sort of like a waiting area. Um, Casimir just slides the door open. Oh, it seems that we have to change and leave our equipment. Uh, this would be lockers in the waiting area, then, right? It would, yes. Okay. Um, and Evie, you sort of figured that out, that there are like lockers on that front yep. part. Um, and there are supposed to be doors there. I apologize. 
Let me put some doors there. Oh, I'm trying to remember not. what I'm wearing right now because I feel like before we went to Fosvog, we had to put on clothes, I think. Was that part of it? What the heck? I can't remember. I'm wearing my disguise, so I remember the right, requirement but... was that we had to wear some black cloak or something, right? But that was only at the place before. Yeah, that was that was way go. far back. Yeah. Um, but then we changed our disguises when we were back at the Warbands camp before we left. Right. Okay. So uh, Rep Rap is going, or well, yeah, Rep Rap is going to set down the shield um, right there against the locker. Okay. Uh, and I don't believe he has anything else to take off, really. Um, I'm going to run back outside really quick and mention to the lady at the front desk that I forgot something and just leave my bag out with um, Lorshik and uh, Vidar and then go back in. Okay. And I'll, like, change or whatever, but I just don't want to leave my actual bag of stuff in here. Okay. That's so I'll leave my bad. staff up against the wall and put my cloak in one of the lockers and change it to whatever the things they have are. They have, like, these little, basically, bathrobes. Yep. Um, and that's it. Okay. Done in the bathrobe, then. And also leaving. Um, so I'm I'm basically leaving Defender and my bag there. That makes right. sense. Then, okay. Yeah. Give me a second. Well, this line nearly goes all the way through. Huh, 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 huh. Um. Okay. Um. Vidar, so you're just standing over Loirshik. If, Lo if you guys wanted to go through the bathhouse, it's not that much effort that it would break your attunement to the item. I'm going to stay outside. Is, is there a place outside that I can kind of like low-key hang out in the shadows and like effectively be hiding to watch rather than just sure, like sure. hovering over him? Make a stealth check, please. Uh, sure, you're hidden. That works. Um, here we go. Um, let me know when you want when you're going into the bathhouse so I can move my camera. If you want to click, you can click the door, Evie, to open the door. Oh, I was trying to pick the door now. So you're, did you strip down completely? Yep. Sorry, is this the bath area where where uh, rep rep is right now, or is it further in? Uh, it's further in. Okay. Are these these are them, right? Uh, no. Okay. That's the closet. <laughs> but there's like bath, but there's Those, there's water. Yeah, tub because things. you should wash, you should rinse yourself off before you get okay. into the bath. I rinse, you rinse. Now. Go to the other Ooh, that is pretty. Let me zoom out. <gasps> Who's this? <laughs> okay, uh, uh, there's only one creature that you can see. There are two creatures, but one of them is very visible to you at the moment. I feel like... Can I do, uh, I don't know what type of check it would be, but like to know if it's polite to sit in the same bath as someone or to yeah, sit in a should. bath with no one in it? Uh, you would have to ask first. That's you, you already know that that kind of thing is not exactly, just going and sitting down is not exactly kosher. Okay, I'm just going to go maybe like look around. I'm looking around the different springs and... Uh, is the creature like resting, like sleeping, super relaxed, it or do they be, notice me? Uh, those of you in chat, it appears to be a small kanku that is just floating on the water. She's just asleep, floating on the water. Um, and she looks like this for those of you in chat who know exactly who this is, but it's fine. I, uh, I'm gonna like get to this bridge and just call across to her 
and say, um, do you have a preferred bath? She sort of shudders herself awake. This one would do. Hmm. Hmm. Best bath. Hmm. And she's just sort of looking at you, and her big old brown eyes are like staring at you. Uh, this bath? Yes. One year. This bath. Do you mind if I join you? Mm, join me, you may. Okay. I'm just gonna basically like be as far away from her as possible, but in the same bath, and she floats right over to you. Yes. Hello. <laughs> And she is uh, the most adorable creature you've ever seen, ever. She looks cute. Uh, My... How big is she compared to me? Like, uh, bird size? She is uh, two and a half, or four and a half feet tall. Okay. She's very small. Okay. But very large for a kanku. Uh, what are you doing, uh, <laughs> technician? Are you going to go uh, look at the other creature that happens to be in here? Um, I was basically moving towards the back and then realized that there's this sort of water feature in the back here and kind of wanted to, um, go up it a bit, I guess, but there doesn't really seem to be a clear path. Well, as you do that, a very large creature comes down to greet you. At least the head of it does. I'm going to do the customary. Hello. <sighs> And it breathes on you, and you're literally pushed backwards. I just took a peek on stream. <laughs> That's very different than what I got. <laughs> uh, we're going to go back to Evie real quick. Okay. Um, what do you say? Do you say anything? Um, she, she sounded like she was about to say something when I asked... Uh, no, she's just staring at you. Okay. Um, do, do you come here a lot to relax? Of course I do. Oh, well, I actually found this place very by chance. Um, where are we exactly? You are in the Eternal Spring. The Eternal Spring. Yes. That's... <laughs> that sounds... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> You'll get used to it eventually. He's fine. My name um, is Skink. 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 I am, as they say, the best girl. Hi, Skink. Um, what I'm, is your name? I, like, hesitate for a second knowing that I'm not supposed to say my real name. Um, and I'll say my name is Slim Shady. <laughs> don't don't hate me. I'm sorry. This is all that comes to mind. Because my name is Evie, so my pseudo is going to be Pika. <laughs> You're going to say you introduce yourself as Pika? Yeah. Yes. Pika! Pika, 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 Pika! Pika! Pika, Pika! She's the Pika! I am the best girl, Pika! Uh, it's great she, to meet she's you. She's literally <laughs> dancing, like on the because she floats. She can't. She can't sink because she's a bird. Um, she's like literally floating and like dancing on her back, like splashing everywhere. Um. Cool. What um, what's going on? I uh, I just have some friends outside. <gasps> doing friends, it. where are they? Invite them over here. I, well, they're... Friends, where all, are you? Where are you, friends? They're, they're friends! All of the... Where are you? Skink. And you, Skink. You, you hear that. You hear that technician on the other side. And even, Hello, Vidar, friend. even Vidar hears it. <laughs> Hello, friends. I am on this side. Come, I have come met over someone. here. I will be, come over I will here. be with you shortly. Come I will be with you here. shortly. Come over here, friend! Put, push my hands onto Skink's face and be like, Hey, shush, shush. They're all of the male persuasion. I don't and, know if they're supposed to be on this side. Oh, no. They have penises. 
Oh no! Well, that's not confirmed actually for any of them, but like in general, I put oh. them in that category. So I don't care. Um, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> uh. Why do you want to meet my friends? Because all friends are good friends. Okay. Make a nature check for me real quick at advantage. Jesus Christ. Kenku traditionally cannot talk on their own. They can only speak in mimicry. Traditionally? Like, this one is not doing that? No, not at all. <clears throat> um, and I, you just told me, so I know this. Um, and, and yes, so as traditionally, um, the idea behind Kenku is that they are cursed by their creator to not be able to talk on their own, but this one is very much doing that. So there seems to be a lot going on with this character. Um, Skink, I can't help but notice you can talk on your own. I've never met a Kenku that can do that. She walks over to you and says, It's okay. Show me your hand. I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, I'll like kind of like hesitantly put it up towards her. She, she, she drifts over to you because she's using one of her feet to kick and drift over to you. And she slaps the shit out of your hand just whoosh, like that. And it literally throws you into what into a vision, like whoop, like it literally whoop, pulls you out of it, and you're standing there with Kink, as uh, Skink, as this enormous, um, sort of bird god that's almost made of stars reaches down, and Skink, um, sort of is just clicking and clacking and and sort of making bird noises, and he touches her forehead. And all of a sudden, you feel all of the knowledge of all of the universe sh shoved into your brain all at once. That same feeling that she potentially could have felt. And all of a sudden, you feel that you can speak like a normal person. And as and it, all of a sudden, you basically get pushed out of that vision. And you're thrown against the rock behind you. And you're like... Uh, well, that was trippy. Um... That's what you experienced. You got your sent your ability to speak as a gift. I did. A god touched me on the forehead right here. And she sort of like pushes her feathers away. And there's like a almost like a full cosmic gem implanted in her forehead. Whoa. I feel like I should have more questions, but I'm mostly just <laughs> uh, in shock of like. You're having a genuine reaction as to what, what exactly is happening right now, and she she just looks at you and she says, "Don't worry, the water heals you, and shows you a vision of the future." And Whoa, she just and she just sort of splashes good. a little bit playfully as she's like she's like twisting and like pushing herself around. Um, okay. Let's go back to technician. Um, okay, so I guess, like, just before friends, friends come over friends. Yep. The friends Hello. happens, friends happens midway through this conversation. Okay. Hello, I am called Phalanx. What are you called? I am the Celestial. Hello, Celestial. The Celestial. Uh, and and Rep Rep kind of recognizes that as a title and gives gives a little bow. As you're looking at this creature that appears to be a serpent, which is a specific type of dragon, um, <clears throat> its long flowing sort of mustache is like moving on its own. And as you're looking at it, and it gets real close to you as it sort of breathes on you and pushes you backwards, um, its eyes are glowing with almost like the fury of a sun, and then the rest of its body appears to be made of space and stars and all sorts of, like, 
celestial beings and, and uh, objects smashed into one being. And everywhere that it moves around, the what it's made of never appears to change. Almost as if you're seeing through the planet and everything and into the space behind whatever planet this is on. You get what I mean? Yeah. To where no matter yeah, where it changes, you are seeing the space behind it almost like it's 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 um it's that window. it's that elder the elder yeah. texture from yes, poe yeah exactly. i know exactly what you're talking about yeah and it's sort of shifting in a, a very fluid movement and it's quite quite beautiful and it, it keeps most of its body submerged in the water the entire time and that would be about the time that i hear uh the friends, friends. Yes, yes. Friends. Okay. Celestial. I would normally like to join you. However, my friends are calling me. May I pass? You make friends quick. Um, and one of his sort of mustache things like wraps around you and throws you to the other side into the pool with them. We. Hello, friends. Um. That and, like this entire and, experience is a full on acid trip. So uh, <laughs> rep rep plopping into the middle of the pool, like definitely phased me. But it's just like adding to the what the fuckery of what's going on. Hi, I've met a and I, Like sink sink lower into the tub. I have That's made cool. friends with a celestial. Who is your new friend? Uh, this is Skink. Hello, Skink. Hello, friend. Hi. I am a skink. I am the best girl. Indeed. I'm like dart my am, eyes between the two of them. I am Phalanx. I am called Phalanx. Oh, sure. Phalanx. He's a little wall boy. Little wall boy, he's a wall, impenetrable uh, kind of wall, a shield. <laughs> Indeed. What the beautiful you... things you have. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, you appear to be made of temper. You are so, oh my gosh, look at you. I see it through your disguise. Where is the puppy? Uh, oh. little, little taken back by that. Um, you could definitely tell that there is something. Uh, this is not a creature that should exist because every time she like looks at you, her eyes glow a little bit green and butterflies flitter and flap away from her. Like these little like ethereal butterflies. Um, you're not really sure. Make an arcana. Both of you make an arcana check, please. At advantage. Did hang on a second. So real, 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 real quick. Monster, did you just post a link to me that I posted to people a week ago? Yes. Yes, she did. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out why, because I'm not That's understanding funny. the joke. Because you said, I am phalanx. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I and did. then you said, I'm called phalanx. So I'm my, just... My excuse is that. that I've been drinking and had a lot of Taco Bell. That's true. Um, <laughs> he did tell us he'd been drinking, so. I had been drinking a lot today. Um, I, what what was, what check? Um, okay. Arcana. Um, <laughs> my excuse is I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Evie, you can tell that she's a wild magic sorcerer. Or she has a link to the Feywild. Hey girl, same. What do you what do you mean same? Uh I magic. <gasps> you are magic as well. How pretty! Pretty lady. <laughs> she did say your real name, by the way. Uh Alright, so Rep Rep's Rep Rep's gonna drop his disguise. Um and uh, it, uh, I am I am rep rep. I My know. designation is okay. I know this. He's I'm quite say a, quite a lot of information actually. He's quite beautiful. <laughs> He's how, so fine. How, 
How do you know so much about us? It's, uh, my, uh, ability to do this is given to me by the god. See, all I have, have to do is look at you. And, and when she says she looks at you, her eye glows like this mysterious orange and red color, like around her iris. And it's huge, like way too big. Um, and you, you feel that she's looking directly into your soul. True sight, something yep. like that. Yep. Okay. Um, to answer your question, uh, my steel defender is in fact in the locker room. Oh, okay. He's safe then. Yes. <laughs> you need to tell your friends to come in the building before they get there. Tell your uh, other friends to get inside. We did if, try. Can they I? They are. They are on their way. Who is on their way? The hunters. Oh shit. Uh, message doesn't reach that far. Can the, the, the hey hunter, rep rep? The hunter of spirits is what they call him. You want to run outside and get the crew in here uh, before the course. hunters come? Can you course. grab my bag, please? Yes. Thank you. Uh, and Rep Rap is going to hastily make his way back to the front. I need Lower Shik and Vidar to make perception checks, please. And your your bag is outside with Lower Shik, right? It's not in the yeah. yeah, I just dropped it next to them. Okay. Um. Uh, make. Oh yeah, Casimir's just chilling. He's just taking a bath on his own because everyone left him. <laughs> he probably liked it. He's probably like, thank God, <laughs> two minutes of peace. <laughs> These crazy fuckers. Um. Um, what she's talking about, Evie, is something... Okay, so Rep Rep, what do you say? Friends, you should come inside. This is an excellent bathhouse. And, and, uh, he's going to go grab Evie's bag and then start moving back inside. As you guys are st sitting there, lawyer Shik, you can feel the ground shaking. Uh, friends, like perhaps you did not hear me. <laughs> Am I still locked in on this, uh, trying to attune to the stone? You are. I... I need all of you. Uh, uh, technician, make a perception check, please. What do you see? Uh, you see in the distance a something coming over the ridge and it appears to be almost like a beholder with crab claws. Well, that's not good. Vidar, you should get inside the bathhouse now. Do I notice uh, him noticing things or? Yeah. I, uh, Hop up and go into the bathhouse then, though slightly flexed as to why he's being so urgent without actually saying anything. Um, and as you're as you're looking to go into the into the bathhouse, the the receptionist lady is literally like like waving her hands to get inside. Gonna, I, I'm I'm just literally going to grab Laura Chick by the by the, the collar and just sort of drag him in so his go concentration's make a strength, not go make a strength check, please. Okay. Oh, you do it. You do it. Yeah. Uh, you pull. You pull Loershik inside. Um, just as uh, the astral dreadnought loses sight of you as you go back into the bathhouse and turns away in a different direction. Um, <laughs> each of you make an Arcana check for me real quick. Technician, 
there is a story when you were young that you heard, not that you when you when you were being created, that you actually got from your little discs in your head, your little hard drives. There is a creature that when you're in the astral plane and you don't belong in the astral plane, this creature exists to devour you and make you stop existing. Called the Astral Dreadnought. And that's what that was. And that's when it comes together. You guys are in the astral plane. So I'm going to, I'm basically going to tell Lord Chicken and, and Vidar and say, um, it appears that we are being hunted by an astral dreadnought, which can only mean that we are in the astral plane. So we have figured out where we are. I assume I don't hear any of this because I'm just so fucking co concentrated. Yeah, you're so just like, I need the sending stone. We need the sending stone. <laughs> He's in for a trip when he gets, comes to. I wonder if that means that we were sent to the astral plane by the man and the cat or just as a consequence of the dead man's hand. Just going to give a very big shrug. But come join Evie and I on the left hand side. Uh, give the receptionist one gold and then head through the lockers on the right and take Lurchick with you. I, I toss two gold onto the uh, the counter, one for me and Laura Schick. And she has no issues with you going on those. She she directs you to her left side or the right side of the map, but okay. um, has no issues with you going on the other side. She sees no dicks, so she's like, eh, whatever. <sighs> I'm kind of guiding Lower Schick. Hopefully he's yep. kind of just following vaguely. He did tell you to go to the other side, by the way. Me? Oh, well, they're they're going to the male side when they need to be going to the female side. I forgot to put Cassie. Oh, I, I, I told them to meet us over there, but she also told them to go to those lockers. True. So, yeah. <clears throat> what are you doing? You're supposed to be naked. This is a bathhouse. Uh... So right, right here, uh, Rep Rap is going to set down Evie's bag, mm -hmm. and then get back into the bathhouse. There, it sounded like you you wanted to do something on that side, so I'll hold my, yeah, my stuff. That's fine. Okay. Um, are you guys actually going to put your stuff in lockers, or what are you doing? Yeah, put stuff in lockers. Uh, we're going to say that by this time, Low Air Chick is. You're going to be attuned eventually. You can you could take part. You're going to be t attuned before you leave the bathhouse. Okay. okay? I'm not going to make don't... you go through the whole process. Okay. I, I don't take off my stuff. Hey, uh, Vidar, where are we? Uh, we were in a bathhouse and apparently in the astral plane, according to Rep Rep. We were told to Sounds join like... him and Evie, but I don't see a way over to the other side. Is there are we on the? Is there more than one side? Maybe there's a different entrance we go. Yes, to? there's a side for females and a side for males. We are on the male side at the moment. Oh, th 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 thanks, Casimir. You're welcome. Why is yeah. everyone going to you that side? Come? We were, Sounds told, like... we were told to join by Rep Rep. Oh, that would have been nice to know. I'll just follow you. And, and keep in mind, Casimir is na butt naked. He is. He gives no shits. No talent. So how big nothing. is it, though? Uh, it's monstrous. He is a half-orc, remember? Oh. This is, this is going to be a problem when we walk <laughs> to this other side. I, I can feel it's coming. Let's just say that he's not unarmed. He's got a whole club with him. <laughs> Um, Casimir comes walking out fully naked, just jumps into the pool with you guys. Um, I'm assuming it's not like the prettiest sight, so I'm just gonna like sink almost to my eyes in the tub and like wince as all of them pile in to the 
small. Well, considering that Casimir is the only one that's actually naked and has anything to show. I mean, Lorschach didn't even take his clothes off. He still has all of his shit on him. And Casimir, Casimir sort of stands at the top of the stairs and goes, oh, oh, yeah, got, to, got to stretch before you get in. And then he just he goes and sits down and looks directly at Evie and, like, puts his arm up. But, like, he looks... He either looks really drunk, or he's just really, really confident. That's good for him. I'm uh, gonna and shift. Keep, it, keep in mind that every single part of his body has a scar on it. Like, he's not scarf. He's not scarification. He's just been in a lot of combat and recovered. I'm not going to look and not going to make a comment. It's okay. It's not a vein. It's a scar. <laughs> Um, and then, also, Al, um, why did I say that? <laughs> and then Skink, uh, Skink just goes, "Ooh, more friends!" And Casimir introduces himself, and she goes, "Casimir, like bear man, bear man. Look at him; he's a big bear man." So, you what were... did you, what did you want us all here for, Skink? I brought you here from uh, the dead hand, the dead man hand. Oh, you brought us here. I did, I saw you. You have... How do you say it? Big future. And I want you to know I brought you here to avoid the arrival of the witch hunters. What, so we, what's a witch hunter? In your world. There are people running around killing magic sorcerers and things. Correct? Yeah. I pulled yes. you here to make sure you do not die to them. Were they tracking us? They were. To... Uh oh. And she runs, she, she sort of wall, she puts herself over and grabs your bag from the thing. And she pulls hey. up your bag of jelly beans. Hey! This shows where, this shows where you are. The jelly beans? No, the bag. Oh. She turns well, it inside sucks. out. And there's a tiny bag, a bead of temper at the very bottom of it. He has one, too. I'm like, look at Lorshik and... I take just, the bag out. Just be like, making a face. It's like, how the fuck did we hold on to this? Um, how do we get rid of these? You can't. You just throw them away. I'm going to put you back. Not right there, but farther south. And then can... you just throw them away. Can you put them back at the dead man's hand for us? I can. I take Yvonne's card out and I toss her the bag. Though I ask her... I don't have to worry about keeping the card, right? No, no, yes, that's fine. I no longer care about the jelly beans, and I just, like, let them fall across the dirt and hand her the bag. That's fine. Why don't you spend the day here, and we will spend the rest of the day here with me, and we will avoid them altogether. That would be great. Thank you. And she sort of just paddles around. Um, and she she does ask you to like tell you about tell her about your guys' adventures and what you've been doing. You guys gonna do that? Yeah. Yeah, she I mean she seems to know everything about us already, so And she the whole time you're talking to her, she's just like paddling around on her back, listening. Um, she very rarely talks after this point. Um, Loershik, how much are you going to talk? Or are you going to at all? Um, I'm going to answer any like direct questions, but mostly okay. just avoiding, to the avoiding it overall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to clarify so I don't give away too much. Um, is anyone else going to say anything before she talks to Vidar? 
I'm assuming that Rep Rep and I were the ones um, like almost like excitedly reliving the stuff that we'd we'd done so far, telling her about it. Probably, that's what I assumed. And I think Rep Rep probably directly references Illusan just to see if there's kind of probing. She does not respond to Illusan at all. Okay. She looks and she like sort of uh, goes over to Vidar, still on her back. I see, and I'm sitting technically on the edge of the yep. thing with just my feet in there, not yep. actually all the way in. And even for the Warforged, you can feel the sort of healing wells that this bathhouse like puts off. Like Vidar, you can actually feel your insides like re like all the some of the damage you've taken recently has put dents and things. You can actually feel that stuff putting itself back properly where it was. Um, same with you, technician. You know, peat chunks of you are missing, and they're just rec reconstructing themselves and things while you're in the pool. Even with your toes in it, you can still feel it. Uh, Skink reaches out and touches your hand, Vidar, and <laughs> you're pulled into your own vision. It's of a massive factory. When I say massive, you are basically floating above this huge floor that appears to be a manufacturing plant for Warforged. A lot of them seem similar to Technician where they're not fully tempered. But there's a special area that you're following one specific Warforged all the way through this manufacturing process from the very beginning to the very end because every single Warforged in this area and in this factory is being put together. <laughs> like machines punching into punching arms into sockets and um, connecting things and welds and things happening in this super future advanced factory and you're following one specific head that you recognize immediately as your own is going to each station but normally each warforged being designed in a specific way some of them get tempered legs some of them get tempered arms some of them have a tempered chest some have like a they all have the same tempered head sort of the same but your specific journey through this factory appears to be that you got a tempered every single piece of you as temper like your yours was carried specifically by some sort of flying machine into each of these sections to gain the tempered versions of their of their specific body parts and you can feel some of your memory returning when you look up and there is a man well it's a it's a humanoid it's a, it's a person um standing at a very large platform at the top of this when i say a massive factory i'm talking that you're if you're on top of this platform where he's standing as you're like shifting out of the view of your of your character being built actively you shift backwards and you see this massive um character whose top half appears to be human but the bottom half appears to be spider like a five-legged spider like ergot from league of legends except very intricately built tempered platform where your top half is met top half is mounted onto he's this huge staff and he's looking down onto this factory floor when he's looking down on the factory floor there is fog in the factory and you cannot see the far end of the factory the factory is so large that you physically can't see the other side of it from where you're standing because there is actual fog preventing you from seeing it like a fog of war because of how massive in scale the factory is. And you recognize this person. You're not really sure what they are, but there's a large symbol carved into um, one of the legs that you immediately recognize. And it is actually from uh, one of the Dwarven worshippers of Forald, Forge Master. There's a large stamped symbol on it that says Forald, that basically is the symbol of Forald, the Forge Master. And you're recognizing this person as Forald, the Forge Master. This is the actual person 
that he was before he became a god. And all of a sudden, you're pulled back and you get thrown backwards off the stairs and tumble down the stairs after she touches you. And uh, to everyone else, this is instant. She touches his hand and he goes, whoom, and he flies backwards um, off the stairs. What am, you guys... I aware, am, am I aware that it was just an instant or to me, does it actually feel like I was gone it, for a it while? It feels like you were gone for a long time because you followed your, your own manufacturing process all the way through. Um, I'm going to just look across to Vidar and go, you too, huh? <laughs> it's slowly it's like kind of pick myself up and stumble on the way up and a little bit dis disoriented and go to sit back down on the, the ledge of the pool and put my feet back in did you get this kind of did you get your story or did you get someone else's I got my own story did you get someone else's yeah I got hers then like just for my elbow to good girl. What's her name? Best, sir, they call her the best the skink. girl. Skink. The best girl. Skink. S-K apostrophe I-N-K. She's quite fascinating. I'm sure her story was interesting. I just got a piece of it, but I'm still recovering. Um... Is anyone else going to ask her anything while you're here? Skink, you said we had a large future ahead of us, and I assume that you mean a grand fate. Is fate, there anything... Fate and future are two different things. I see. Is there anything that you can tell us that may help us? Not without ruining it for you. I understand. It's delicate the matter of future is something I can tell you fate may have a different direction for you in the end I'm gonna lower myself to bu make bubbles in the pool and be like this is a lot for one day Loershik what are you doing this whole time I'm intently listening, but I want to ask her one question before okay. we finish. I I ask her, how's my family doing? They are just fine. Quite prosperous, actually. Not for you not being there. They made a shrine and everything. I just nod. We heard all that? Yes, you did. But you didn't really understand it. I asked one more question. Okay. Is is Callum going to be okay? <laughs> Callum has always been okay for you. He's there and he'll always be there for you. He's fine. Thank you. He's always been fine. Do any of you have a response for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's Callum? Yeah. <laughs> We're in a him. bath together. <laughs> it's time to open up. This is literally I, opening I'm on the a kimono. Okay. Open up. <laughs> open up. Open up. Come to the open other up. side of the bridge. Absolutely not. I am saying we're traveling <laughs> together. I feel like we all need to learn a little something, something about each other. And if you have something that's constantly helping you or always there for you, we should probably know about it. Who said anything about constantly helping me? What's her name? Skink. Oh. Skink. Uh, Skink, you just you you just said that. What? You just said that, that he's always there for me. That's all. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I made some assumptions. Well, I 
Like, what the? Just because he has friends and you don't or something. What do you do? But they're already here already. Why am I being attacked? I just asked him to open up. He is opening. Look at him. He's like a little butterfly. At the metamorphosis. Lower check. It is okay for you to have a male friend. In this day and age, that seems to be the least... <laughs> <laughs> the 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 least uh, persecution worthy thing about us. I will have you know that I, while I am not against that sort of lifestyle, <laughs> I uh, I just so happen to have uh, previously been in a relationship with um, someone of the opposite gender. It didn't these, end very well. These two things are not mutually exclusive, Laura Chick. It's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just I smile and I, I shake my head at him I hope we get to meet Callum soon and I hope he continues to make you make you very happy I uh I still have all my stuff on so you I do. I open I open my bag and uh, I assume Callum jumps on my shoulder he point. does uh, I say I look over to my shoulder and say, why don't you jump in the pool with them? Oh, you sure? The restorative pool. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Uh, he goes to jump in the pool. And the rest of you see the pool splash. Psh, and... Um... Loer Shik, only you can see this, but Callum's skull begins to regrow flesh. And in does it feel good, Callum? He's literally you. You can't tell. You can't tell anything that's happening. And the rest of you, the pool around you begins to bubble, and not boil, but like there's something happening under the water that you can't see. I'm going to dart my eyes at Casimir and be like, is this you? Can you imagine if it was that large? That would be incredible. Oh, no, I'm I, not farting I if that's what you're asking. the crew. Sorry, guys. I think I think Calum's been eating some beans lately. And I you see. Watch... Calum is invisible. This may be more problematic for acceptance than I thought. <laughs> and you watch Loershik as he regrows... All of his body, and he is a seven and a half foot tall, gigantic ginger man with a 12 inch long beard that's braided. He basically looks like a giant, inch long beard. A, a giant, uh, he's a giant, uh, ginger Viking warlord. Essentially, that's exactly what it looks like. He has tattoos, like his whole body is tattooed from head to toe, all of it. Um, and even his clothes actually come back to him. He's dressed in, like, this beautiful set of, like, engraved plate armor. And he has this gigantic war hammer with him. And his crown is on. Like, he looks like a proper king now. And he sort of stands up in the pool. And you guys can see that there's water being displaced by an enormous creature. And he sort of can walks. Can Skink see? Oh, yeah. Skink can absolutely okay. see him. Uh... I, Keep in I mind, this, happen, this happens say. over, like, a 15-minute period. I just want to fast-forward just a little bit. I look over to Skink and say, Hey, Skink, um, with these visions, is there any way you could uh, show my friends who Callum is? I, am. Um, yes, I can do that one time. It. Let's do that. Okay. Everyone come here. And she like puts her hands out. Touch me for a moment. Uh, Rap Rap's going to reach out and hold her hand. Okay. Uh, Casimir's like, sure. Why not? Uh, we've already done some crazy shit today. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Poor I, I, was, I was assaulted by a planes walking cat. This is nothing. Um, And he grabs all, all four of you grab it. Uh, and, and she even beckons in Lower Shik. Um, and all of you, again, 
thrown into a vision, except all of you are together standing in a semicircle around each other, basically not holding hands, but you're not holding on to skink anymore. And you're pulled onto this battlefield where it's absolute carnage. And right in the middle of it, shining um, gloriously is Callum, this enormous stature of a man just smashing hordes of enemies uh you can't really tell what the enemies are they appear to be skeletons or something uh essentially what you're looking at is a large plane where there's rain it's raining and storming all around him he has a bunch of people by his side that have like this sort of like winged helmets um they sort of look like thor like the comic book thor and they're all just going ham with war hammers and directly in front of him is a giant rock that appears to be uh, uh, I can't really describe it properly it looks like a meteor but inside of it is a veins of temper and underneath this rock is just constantly spawning undead zombies giant zombies zombie dragons zombies uh, skeletons uh, everything from under the ground crawls out of the ground and Callum is directly in front of this enormous horde of undead just destroying everything. Him and his whole crew, he has thousands of people behind him and you're basically doing a flyover of this battle as he's battling in front of this gigantic meteor of temper and Callum is at the forefront and you're just seeing him. He's covered in dead flesh. He's covered in blood. He's covered in blown bone splinters and everything. And he has this enormous, like, uh, brass... Or it's an, a wrought iron crown attached to this brilliant helmet that he has. And he is just smashing everything. And you can hear him the whole time going, You get right fucked! And he's, like, fucking yelling in his cockney accent the whole time. And all of his friends are yelling at him in the same accent. And it's absolutely beautiful. Right up until you see this enormous flying creature that has wing bow wings made of bone. And it's dressed in a dark ebony plate mail. And it pulls back on this bone spear that appears to be 10 feet long. Hurls this javelin at him and it spears him straight in the chest. And you watch as Callum just stops for a moment. And he just immediately starts going ham again, and he gets struck by another one, and another one, and another one, and he finally falls to his knees, and his head drops, and whoom, pulls you out of the vision, and all of you are thrown backwards out of the pool. My and turn just, to Lord, and, and just for a moment, as you look back into the pool, you see a vision of Callum in his prime standing in the middle of the pool with his war hammer like looking exactly like the day that he passed and then the vision fades away uh turn to where she can be like you know that guy uh we've definitely gotten to know each other that was the voice in my head briefly me too i wouldn't forget that one hmm you remember when we first met and we went and we fought the dude with the soul stitch scythe? The necromancer. Yeah. I uh, I might have taken some bones and Callum might have been in with those bones apparently. So he's just been hanging out with us since then. Those were my bones. You, you took my bones. You took them. You just you, took my uh, yeah, but You took them. The, you pillaged you them. You took a guy's you're head. You're a pilferer. You motherfucker. I, 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 I turned them into awesome weapons, Callum. Uh, you did. I'll give you that, mate. It's pretty fucking dope, actually. And, and you see him. And he's like he's like literally crawling out of the pool and standing next to you. He's like, you don't need that pack. You don't need that little bag no more. I'll be right here for you. I I take the bag. And, and, he, say, and he, puts, he puts his hand on your shoulder. And you feel like this crazy weight of probably the heavy like it's just so heavy it, it's like a pressure but it's like phantasmal pressure that just doesn't it shouldn't exist but you feel like it's not really a weight it's more of like a in, like a sort of enhancement i don't know it's sort of buffing you and like making you feel good as he puts his hand on your shoulder like you're calm and you feel better 
I take the bag and I I toss it to uh, Vidar and say, he's been hanging out in here, but it looks like the pool's made it so he's not going to be able to fend that bag anymore. And with that, your will of the old king power is now transferred that each of the party members can use it once a day on their own. Ooh. I uh, so, take the bag and I hold it up and I say, Evie, do you need a place to store your jelly beans? <laughs> if someone wants to pick them up off the ground, but I'm not doing it. Yes, Hurt. like a weighted blanket, Gareth. Gareth is, is on point with that one. And um, does anyone have any other questions for Skink? Or does anyone want to do anything else? Uh, Rep Rep is going to pick and pack the jelly beans up off the ground. Oh. Thanks. And put them in the in the Callum bag and hand them back to Evie. Would I, I heard, uh would I have heard uh Rep Rep talking about the planeswalkers earlier? He was mm -hmm. pretty open about that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Skink. Uh, so the Eye of Moonball, we believe, was sold to a planeswalker. Would a planeswalker have intention of doing something sinister with that? Or should that eye be safe just being taken elsewhere? It cannot be removed from your plane. So he's in league with someone on your plane that I cannot see. It's like there's a missing section of the places where they go. I don't know where it is, but I cannot see into it. The only people we know that have the ability to remain hidden in large areas are the people that we work with. Do you believe it's possible? No, that they have I can access? still... I can see them. I can see the war bands. I cannot see this other group. So something stronger. I see. Stronger. One word of advice before I send you back. Find the soul forged. Skink, is there anything that we can do for you? No. While this is happening, I take out a piece of beef jerky and I start munching on it. And she looks at it and she's like, her big ass eyes are just like going ham as she watches I, you eat it. I take, I take another piece of jerky out of my, my bag. I say, would you, would you like one? I would love one, but I can't. I toss it to skink. Um, while she's saying that it actually goes right through her. It just splashes in the water. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Casmer, you want that? He just immediately picks it up and starts eating it. <laughs> Face first into the water. <laughs> um, I'm assuming that means you don't want any questionably magic j jelly beans. No, I'm dead. You what? I'm dead at the moment. Okay. It's funny that you mentioned Terry and Gusha. Because pretty soon I should be resurrected by them. You know how you know how I mentioned your friends? Well, my friends let me die. Why did they let you die? Because they had to save the world instead of saving me from my family. She starts to cry. She has to. Uh, she starts to uh, tear up a little bit. I'm gonna put one hand on her. Give her a little pat. She feels so soft. Like not like feathers, like you're touching silk or something else. You're not really sure how to how to relate what the way you're feeling when you touch her, but you've never felt more calm in your life. Oh. And she looks at you, she says, it's okay. <sighs> I'm going to send you back now. Oh. 
Okay. Thank you for all of that, for saving us and talking to us. And she she holds up her hands and she claps like this. And all of a sudden you guys, you're thrown back into it. But you are currently, um, we're going back to the Verdant Guard. You are thrown down to just south of Wagenberg, down this way, basically where Lower Schick is. And you arrive back on there. And all of you have all your gear with you. Um, a second later, uh, the shield throws it, it hits you right in the face technician and your, your dog is just like slaps you in the face. You're like, what the, and all of your, all of your guys' equipment is there. Everything is there. Uh, you look around lower Shik, and Callum is right there behind you still holding your shoulder full body and everything. Well, that was interesting. You tell him me, mate. It's crazy. What the fuck is going on? What time we day is it? We should contact Stanislava. Um, uh, the date is actually noon. Midday. Did, uh, part agree. of the attunement thing earlier, did uh, we actually send that first message? No. We were just attuning at the time. Maybe we should change the last two words from send help to met skink. Would they know who skink is? I don't know. They might. Would they know who Haka or Master Haka is? We've sent a lot of encrypted mess information in this 25 word message. I feel like we should let them know about the witch hunters. We should. The war bands may be in danger. I feel like the witch hunters are more important than Haka. I agree. So let's just tell them about the, the handoff and that there are witch hunters looking for us. We can explain the details when we get back. Or do we just yeet back? Like, do we need to stay here? This was our, like, main thing, right? Was to watch the trade-off happen? Yes, that was our main thing. But there was no... The plan was to observe and report. The plan was not to necessarily to go back immediately. What were we supposed to do after we reported... Await further instruction, I believe. Asmir, do you know? I don't know myself. It's one of those things that I would assume that we should go back. Because mission complete, we saw who did it. So maybe we should go back. It's up to you guys, though. I'm not, I'm not here to make decisions. I am a little uncomfortable in this position because I don't have enough information. I feel like we should maybe just go back. Before we go back, uh, it appears that we have... W would we... Or meta here for a second. Do, would we know that we're at Wagenberg? Yes, because you've... Uh, uh, you would be able to do some train association fairly quickly. Especially Rep Rap. Rep Rap would be extremely good at that. So... Be before we head back, maybe we should send a message and check Wagenberg before when we were traveling with Yvonne. The king had said that the voice of Gleam was here during the attack on the temple. Uh, Gleam may have more information about soul stitching, and Skink told us that we should seek the soul forged. There that may does be seem an like a very sound plan. That is assuming the voice is still here. If they are not, we will know one place where they are not. 
This day can't get any weirder, so I'm down for whatever. Also, so, yeah, I think that's the message, message we should send. Yeah. So you're going to send the message? So we should send a message. Yeah, I'm going to send the message. Okay. And I did put the... I... There you go. You edited it. Okay. I yeah, just I wanted, yeah, I just I wanted to make sure. If you guys have questions about spelling and things like that, please tell me so I can uh, get you the right spellings. Um, so I so, should probably say the message for chat. Yes, please. So I uh, I pull out this sending stone. I say meat. And I I say M -E -A -T hand off at dead man's. Word? Yes, M-E-A-T. <laughs> Don't you say that a lot? Say. Or do you have, do you say, does it work? Like you say it specifically to the you stone. You have to say like it's it to not... the stone to get okay. it to work. Cool. Yeah. Just making sure it's not like Alexa, where if you say, hey, Google, it sets off anytime. No, 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 no. You have to like concentrate on it and then say the, the, the word. All right. And, cool. And, and you just set off uh, 18 of them right now. Intentional. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I speak into the stone, hand off a dead man's hand. Buyer, Terry, and Gusha as old man and cat planeswalkers. Witch hunters coming. Must find the soul forge. Send further instructions. Okay. The message goes off. Um, and you can definitely tell it hasn't been used to try and send you a message or anything like that because they're all they are like one or the other gets a message and they haven't been used. Um, and you hear no response, obviously. Um, and I think that's where we're going to leave this episode. Perfect ending. Because you guys are going to go into Wagenberg and see if the voice of Gleam is there. All right. I hope everybody... Oh, I forgot to do the Patreon again. Um, I forgot to make the Patreon list. But I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to Patreon. Um, and I got a request to put the links into my YouTube, which I'm doing. Which I have been doing. Um, yeah, if you want to go subscribe to the YouTube, uh, subscribe to Patreon if you want to support me there. That'd be great. Um... Thanks for supporting me here. For those of you that subscribed early on, I appreciate that. Gareth, you should watch that part of the episode. You should watch, go back and watch it because Skink is in the original series in Caesar's Destruction for most of it. So, that being said, um, yeah, everyone have a great week. Stay safe. Um, yeah, and we'll talk to you. I'll see you guys in a little bit on Spooky Stream. We're going to open some magic cards. It's going to be a good time. Um, and I will talk to you guys later. Uh, yeah, someone, one of the mods should have links to the Discord. Oh, also join the Discord. Come talk to us. Um, everyone have a great week, and we will talk to you later. Bye.